Hello guys and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to check the Cadix Vista Mini Digital Transmission System. The Vista, which is also known as the Air Unit Light, is manufactured by DJI and is a result of a collaboration between DJI and Cadix. In this video, I'm going to quickly go over the Vista's features and specs, show you how to set it up and connect it to your flight controller, and also hopefully be able to measure its output strength. In terms of packaging, inside this compact box, along with the Vista, which is of course already pre-assembled, you can find a Rush FPV Cherry Antenna, which is using a UFL antenna connector, a silicone harness for connecting the Vista with your flight controller, a 2mm hex key driver, and the user manual. As you can see, the Vista is much more compact than the full DJI Air unit. It weighs 29.5 grams, so it's about 15 grams lighter than the Air unit. Including the Rush FPV antenna, it weighs 32 grams, which is about 20 grams lighter than the DJI Air unit, including the two DJI stock antennas. Unlike the full DJI Air unit, which is not a very build-friendly device since it doesn't feature any mounting holes, the Vista features both 20 by 20 and 25.5 by 25 mm mounting options, so you'll be able to easily mount it on top of your Mini or your Whoop style stacks. The auto dimensions of the Vista are 29, by 29 by 13 mm. Except its back cover, the camera of the Vista is identical to the camera of the full air unit, so you can expect the same picture quality. You should note that the coaxial cable which connects the camera unit to the main board is not protected with a rubber cover, so be careful when installing the model. The length of the coaxial cable of the Vista is 7 cm, which is 3 cm shorter than the cable of the air unit. Connecting the Vista to your flight controller is done using these soldering pads, which match the same layout of the connector of the air unit. So over here you can find the SBUS out, which will enable you to use the receiver option in case you are using the DJI remote controller. Over here the ground, TX and RX pads, which are going to be connected to a free UART port on your flight controller in order to get the telemetry data. And over here the ground and VCC pads. Unlike the air unit, which can be powered directly with up to 4S batteries, the DC input of the Vista is wider, and it is between 7.4 to 26.4 volts, so it can be powered directly with up to 6S LiPo batteries. In addition, the maximum output strength of both units is identical, and in case you are going to set the Vista to FCC mode and apply the NACO hack, you can set it to up to 1.2 watts. So basically, there are two major differences between the Vista and the full DJI Air unit. First of all, the Vista doesn't feature a micro SD card slot, and even though it does have a built-in 4GB onboard memory, it won't allow you at the moment of shooting this video to record the flight footage, and you are going to be dependent on the flight footage that is going to be recorded on your DJI goggles, which is inferior in terms of quality, and also suffers from video interference. The second major difference is that unlike the DJI Air unit, which is using two antennas, the Vista is only using one, which is probably going to affect the effective range, and also removes the ability to recover lost data packets. I'm going to conduct a range test soon, and then find out how a single antenna of the Cadix compares to two antennas on the Air unit. Now I'm going to show you how to install the Cadix Vista on the Beta FPV Beta 95X, which I'm going to feature on a separate video. Normally I would suggest powering up the Vista or the Air unit using a regulated BEC, but since neither the flight controller and the EC of the Beta 95X have one, I'm just going to power up the Vista using the battery pads. So over here I soldered the VCC plus wire, and over here I soldered the ground wire. In addition, I'm going to solder the RX pad of the Vista to the TX1 pad on the flight controller, and the TX pad on the Vista to the RX1 pad on the flight controller. Since I don't have the DJI remote controller, I'm going to use the FRSky XM Plus receiver that was bundled with the Beta 95X. However, if you do own the DJI remote controller, you'll need to simply solder the SBUS pad on the Cadex Vista to a free RX port on the flight controller, and then configure it on Betaflight. Now as you can see, all the wires are soldered to the Cadex Vista, and before powering it up, make sure to add an antenna, because otherwise you are risking burning the VTX. The UFL connector is protected and secured using this metal part, and in order to release it, you'll need to release this M2 screw. Then just Move it like that. Carefully connect the antenna because the UFL connector is pretty fragile and trust me, you don't want to resolder it to the board. Then push the metal part and secure back the M2 screw. Now we need to activate the Vista using the DJI Assistant tool. So first download and install the latest version. Connect the Vista to your computer using a USB cable. 
then you will need to power it up and I recommend to use a fully charged battery and also make sure that the propellers are removed from the motors. It will take about 20 seconds for the computer to recognize the Cadex Vista and it will be shown as a DJI FPV air unit light. Now we need to activate the device by selecting it, start activation, agree of course to everything that you're going to read, and now I'm going to update the Vista to the latest available version. The whole process is going to take about 10 minutes and that's the reason I recommend to use a fully charged battery. Now you will need to bind the Vista with your DJI goggles. So first power up both devices, then press the bind button on your DJI goggles which is located over here. The goggles are going to start beeping. And now you will need to press the bind button on the Cadex Vista which is located next to the USB-C connector. The double beep that you could just hear indicates that the bind procedure was successful and as you can see we are getting the video feed inside the goggles. Now in case you would like to apply the 1200mW hack you will need to power up the Cadex Vista, connect it to your computer, it is going to be recognized as a 4GB flash drive and then in order to apply the hack simply copy the NACO TXT file which I'm going to include in the description box of this video to the newly discovered flash drive. You should keep in mind however that running the Cadex Vista on 1200mV is not really recommended because unlike the DJI Air unit which has a big metal case that also double acts as a heatsink, the DJI Vista doesn't have it and there is a good chance that it's going to overheat and enter low power mode which is probably going to cause you to lose video connectivity and crash your quadcopter. Now basically all you have to do is to connect your flight controller to your computer, head over to Betaflight, hit connect and under the ports tab enable the configuration slash MSP switch next to the yard port if you connected to the Cadex Vista in order for the relevant data including your drone battery voltage to be displayed on the OSD of your DJI goggles. Don't forget to hit save and reboot in order for the settings to be saved. Before wrapping up this video I'm going to try to measure the output strength of the Vista. I've turned off the automatic temperature control and I'm going to do the test really fast because the Vista gets hot really quickly which causes the output range to drop. Now the Vista is set to 25 milliwatts and I'm getting between 7 to 12 milliwatts. Now it's set to 200 milliwatts and I'm getting around 60 milliwatts. On 500 milliwatts I'm getting between 150 to 160 milliwatts. On 700 I'm getting around 200 milliwatts. On 1000 milliwatts I'm getting about 300 milliwatts. And finally, when it's set to 1200mV, I'm getting about 350mV. Let's see how hot it gets. And I'm only going to let it run for one minute because I don't want to risk burning the VTX. And according to my test, surprisingly, at its hottest point, it was only 52 degrees Celsius, which can only confirm that the DJI digital system worked a little bit different than normal VTXs. So even if you turn off the automatic temperature control, it will limit the output strength, so make sure that the Cadex Vista and also the DJI Air unit get enough ventilation in order to improve the way it performs and also extend your range. So overall, the Cadex Vista looks like a very promising product that offers us a cheaper and also mini and micro quadcopter friendly alternative to the DJI Air unit and I'm really looking forward to testing it out. I'm pretty sure that soon we are going to see more products that are going to join the DJI FPV digital transmitters family and hopefully we are even going to see micro transmitters with a built in micro SD cards that will enable us to record the flight footage without any interruptions. So that's going to be it for my initial hands on review of the Cadex Vista. As always I would like to thank you for watching my video, I hope you enjoyed it and you find it useful. If you have any questions feel free to ask them in the comments section down below. Don't forget to leave a thumbs up if you like this video and consider subscribing to my channel and hitting the notifications bell if you're not already subscribed. See you in my next videos and goodbye.